sharing. I want to welcome Blair to the to, to the Echo Voices, and um, we'll invite you to share your screen and and tell us what you have to say this morning. Great, thank you, Gail. Um, so I will share my screen here. Let me know when you can see the presentation in full screen. We can. Looks great. Okay. And I actually can still see our faces. So um, if, you know, usually those go away. If any of you have questions, um, of course, feel free to put them in the chat um, or just interrupt. And I'm happy to, you know, keep it informal today and, and answer questions as they come up. Um, so yes, I'm Blair from Toby Dynavox. Um, I support mostly the Portland area. Um, I say the Portland area, but it is a little bit broader than that. It's down to about Salem, um, east into the gorge and west to the coast um, and north to um, Vancouver. I, I stop right at the border. Um, so that is my region of support with Toby Dynavox. Um, I have my contact information here, but it's also available at the end. Um, so if you have any questions throughout, feel free to take note of that. And um, you all can email me anytime or that's my cell. Um, so if questions come up, that's another way to get a hold of me. A little bit of background here. Um, I am an SLP. I am from the Portland area originally. Um, I went to school in LA for undergrad and then came back to Oregon for my post back and then got my master's in Washington at University of Washington, um, graduated in 2020, right in the peak of the beginning of COVID. Um, and then I worked clinically as an SLP, primarily with adults for about two years and then found this role um, when I was just looking for a new challenge. Um, and my favorite thing about this role is really making AAC feel accessible and not as daunting as it can. Um, I love sharing resources and trainings and thinking back to when I was in grad school and first in the field and feeling like, how do we go about AAC? You know, the one class um, that we got in grad school was not sufficient for being independent with AAC knowledge in the field. So um, that's really the angle that I like to um, come at all of this with that in mind. Um, and just really make it feel easy and accessible. So that's my my goal today. Okay, so um, I have some um, links and things sprinkled throughout, but the general overview of today um, is just to tell you a little bit about Toby Dynavox, um, share some uh, resources that we have. That's my main focus today is gonna be on the free training resources and uh, support resources that are available to you all as SLPs, OTs, PTs, um, teachers, ATPs, everyone can access these resources for free. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with Toby Dynavox, um, Toby Dynavox supports AAC users. Um, with AAC solutions, devices, um, as well as low-tech options, we have a lot of great low-tech um, options out there to support AAC users. And also um, a lot of great just assistive technology uh, resources and programs a little bit broader than just AAC. So um, you've probably heard of TD Snap. That is our flagship communication software um, on all of our devices, but we also have more broad assistive technology programs um, to support access outside of communication, things like environmental controls, um, programs for um, alternative access of the internet. Um, we just launched a, a program called TD Phone that allows phone calls and texting um, with eye tracking, um, as well as TD Browse, which is a browser that Toby Dynavox built specifically for folks who use eye gaze as their access method. Um, so it's like a whole internet platform for iGaze users. Um, so I think that's just something I like to point out that um, Toby Dynavox goes beyond just AAC and communication um, into a lot of uh, great access uh, areas to support lots of different needs. 
Okay, if anybody wants to share, I'm curious if you've had previous experience with Toby Dynavox, um, devices, software, um, anything that you want to share before I keep going that will help me kind of frame some things today. OTAP has has um, some Toby Dynavox software that we have in our lending library. I know we have TD Snap and um, I think we have some other things from you as well. Yeah, great. All right. Um, so I've talked a little bit about kind of the, the breadth of Toby Dynavox um, here already, but today I'm going to focus on these supports. Um, so first of all, here you see this network of solutions consultants. That is my role. Um, there are two of us in Oregon. Um, we're all over the country, and our role is to really help make AAC accessible from that first phone call or email when SLPs or maybe teachers reach out and say, I think I have a student who might benefit from a device. Like, what are the next steps? Um, that's where we come in and we help with the whole process to help them get a device, um, figuring out the funding options, the, the insurance side of things. We take care of all of that. Um, so that's some support on the front end. And then we also do ongoing trainings. We help the client and family set up the device. Um, if they're doing any home controls or mounting, we help with all of that. Um, so that is this piece of support, the network of consultants. We also have tech support, which support the devices for the, the lifetime of the device. Um, and they can even remote into devices if you have a complex problem and they need to take control. Um, and then of course, these additional resources um, are where I'm gonna spend most of the time today, learning and training resources for you all. Okay, so who do we support? We support anyone who needs AAC and assistive technology um, throughout the whole lifespan. We have a lot of great um, myth-busting resources on our Learning Hub. The Learning Hub is one of the first things I'm gonna dive into today. Um, but if you're curious about the resources about this myth, that someone can be too impaired to use AAC, um, go ahead and scan that QR code and it'll pull up a nice PDF that really dives into um, some great research and um, just background around how everybody can benefit from AAC and some good strategies. I know that you all typically um, do case studies on these calls, so I wanted to prepare um, kind of a, a little case study here to um, kind of carry us through today and, and use Rosie as our, our student um, for today's resources and keep her in mind as we're looking through some things. So um, let's say Rosie is an 11 year old girl. Um, cerebral palsy is her medical diagnosis. She's currently using some low tech um, communication boards in the classroom, teachers and um, others in the classroom are helping her scan through some options. She's got some pretty clear physical signs of reliable yes and no when she's happy, when she doesn't like things. Um, and she can request um, with partner assisted scanning and low tech options pretty consistently where she wants to go, what she wants to do, um, and show signs that she's happy or that she wants something to change. And school and the classroom, they use iPads. And family is pretty familiar with iPads as well. So just kind of laying the groundwork here for Rosie to keep in mind as we go forward. So let's say you are an SLP or a teacher in, let's say you're an SLP um, in Rosie's classroom and you think, gosh, she's got some pretty solid communication skills, even though her speech is um, challenging. She's letting us know reliably yes and no with her body. Um, she's got great receptive language. I think she could be a candidate for a high-tech system. When you start to think that, that someone could benefit from AAC, this is a great time to dive into our learning resources. So I want to share some of those today. Um, the Learning Hub, which is this icon on the right, um, that is a really self-paced way of going about CEUs and ongoing trainings. We have a lot of um, resources on the Learning Hub that offer ASHA CEUs. 
Um, and these are videos and PDF downloads that you can save at any time and refer back to. So really self-paced versus the live events calendar. And I have links to these later in the, in the PowerPoint. Um, the live events calendar has live trainings like this, where you're on Zoom with folks that work for Toby Dynavox, sharing about the technology, um, and you can put questions in the chat and have those answered in real time. So back to our case study, um, let's say you want to learn um, about some access method options for Rosie. You're not sure where to start. She's got a complex body, but some great communication skills. Um, so maybe we wanna start looking into access method and just seeing what options there are. Um, Gail, I'm gonna click this link and it hopefully will keep sharing my screen. Please let me know if that does not happen. Okay. Oh, you're working well. Okay. Great. I wanted to let, let me take this moment to uh, say too in the chat. Um, Julie says she has uh, some experience with TD Snap, and Kelly says she has students using an i13 with pod, pod page sets. So we do have some folks on who are familiar with some of the products that you have, but. Great, great, thank you. I, I couldn't see the chat, so I appreciate you letting me know. If that right. Was... Yep. Um, so I just linked into the Learning Hub. Um, when you first land, so I'm already logged into the Learning Hub, so this link brought me directly to the course. But let me show you what it looks like when we first land here. Um, they are working to redo the Learning Hub. It's under construction today, so I'm hopeful that it'll look a little prettier very soon. Um, but when you are logged in and you first land here, um, this course catalog is a great place to start. So um, if I want to learn about access methods, I can go into this access and mounting category and then look at access methods. This will pull up all of these courses that are related to access methods for AAC. If I want to learn, keeping Rosie in mind, if I want to identify a good access method for her, I could go into this identifying access methods course. There are um, feature lists here, um, and I hope it'll still share my screen, Gail, as I go. Um, yeah, it's working well. Perfect. Um, so this talks a little bit about different access methods from touch, different touch accommodation settings like hold time or releasing upon exit or, um, sorry, selecting upon exit or release of a button, um, using a mouse or using eye tracking and scanning. And within that, it shows all of the different scanning options. If I go back here, within that course, there's also an access screening tool and this is a really great resource um, because you don't need a device for this, um, this screening. It really walks you through observations to take note of, um, note how your client or student is communicating um, and some set activities to help you identify a potential access method. So things to observe, were they able to point? Were they able to isolate some part of their hand? Um, and we can go down through using a mouse. We can look at a head mouse indicators for that as a great access method. So there's um, just lots of great tools here to kind of help us start thinking about what could be good for Rosie. Let me go back into my PowerPoint. Any questions there about what I've showed so far on the Learning Hub? No, but I, I think you've given me something to do over the summer when things are slow. Great. Um, so let's say we've looked at access method for Rosie and now we're ready to start looking at um, some software options and some, some AAC vocabulary organization. Let's go into this link and I wanna show you how within the Learning Hub, um, how you can access some of these. So this took me directly into 
um, the course. But again, if I wanted to get here indirectly, um, if I didn't have that link handy, I could go into this course catalog and then software and apps. And if I know I'm going to look specifically at TD Snap, I would just use this down arrow and go into TD Snap. There's a lot more here. You can learn about Snap Scene, um, accessible literacy learning, um, some of those newer TD Browse and TD Phone for um, access of a phone or an internet platform via eye tracking. So you can really dive into any of these. But today for Rosie, I'm going to look at TD Snap. And let's say I just want a nice overview of TD Snap. I can come in here and do a 10 minute overview of all the features of TD Snap. Um, and then for each page set, um, so TD Snap is kind of an umbrella platform. And within that, we have the core first layout, we have pod um, adapted into the high tech system, we have a text page set that doesn't have symbols. Um, if you're working with literate adults, we also have an aphasia page set. And we also just launched the motor plan page set, which is very similar to the core first. But if you're not familiar, I would really encourage you to check that out um, because the navigation is um, very smooth and um, everything bounces back to the home page so that the user learns a motor plan. Um, but it's still very easy to edit and customize um, as the SLP or the family. So I could take this 10 minute video course to learn more about TD Snap for Rosie um, and get started there figuring out which layout would be best for her. And then once I've done that, maybe because I know that she uses iPads in the classroom, maybe I, I'm thinking that um, an iPad based system uh, could be good for her. And let's say we've identified that she needs eye tracking. There are courses specific to AAC devices in the Learning Hub. So I could come in here and take this course about the TD Pilot, which is our iPad Pro option. Um, it's an iPad Pro that allows for eye tracking. So within the communication software, um, the, the access method is eye tracking. And then outside of that, um, it uses Apple's assistive touch for allowing eye gaze access of all of the Apple apps. Um, so maybe I think that could be a good fit for Rosie because, you know, her family and teachers are using um, iPads in the classroom and we've already identified that that's a good software for her and that she needs eye gaze access. So I hope this kind of highlights how you can use the Learning Hub to just um, find out information about every um, step of this AAC puzzle so far. Any questions there before I go on? There are none in the chat so far. Okay. Doing great. Great. Um, so we've already kind of talked about the access method tools available, but um, I just put this slide on here so you all can see the various access methods for which there are resources in the Learning Hub. Um, there's videos and there's assessment tools as well, which I showed. Um, I, can you go back to that slide? I just want to confirm it looked to me like when you showed us those access methods uh, the options in, in the Learning Hub that they were very, um, they, they didn't, they weren't specific to Toby Dynavox products that you were looking to give kids um, the, to, to figure out what that, that specific access method is, regardless of the system. And and I know you're a to Toby Dynavox rep, but I, I think that's an important thing for all of us to, to think about. Is that accurate? Did I see that correctly, that particularly those access methods are pretty generic? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great um, thing to point out, Gail. I think so. There are some slight variations in the language um, and the descriptions of different access methods. Like our touch enter means that the user is going to hold down on a button until it selects. So that's like touch with hold time. 
I think some other device companies call that like touch and hold. So for example, there's some slight language differences, but the resources about the access methods can be applied for any system. Um, and I think that's also um, a good segue. There are a lot of great resources on the Learning Hub that are more AAC in general. Um, the most heavily taken course is called The Magic of Modeling. Um, there's another one called Creating a Positive Communication Environment. Um, those are ones that I share with almost every SLP and family, um, and they, they give pretty specific um, recommendations for how to model, when to model, and I think that's not just um, a Toby Dynavox principle, of course. Thank you. Um, but, you know, we want, you have, your company has some great products, but we also want to make sure that we're um, inviting people to information that, that can apply no matter what products they're purchasing. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great point. Okay. So let's say you've used the Learning Hub to gather all of that information up to this point and you've landed on, I think I wanna take the next steps to have a TD Pilot funded, which is the, the iPad Pro with eye tracking. Um, we also have a lot of supports for the assessment and, and documentation process um, through the funding process. So um, within the Learning Hub, there are a lot of great funding resources. There are courses um, both on the self-paced learning hub and on the live calendar um, for how to write an AAC device recommendation report as an SLP um, and what the requirements are for every step of that process. Um, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, but we also have um, this e-funding portal. I'll speak to that now. Um, sorry, I forgot my slides were in this particular order. Um, the eFunding portal is a live, um, it's a website in which you can write an SLP report for an AAC device, um, but it's a great kind of living platform, almost like a Word doc, in which I, as the consultant, can review your report and make sure that it is up to insurance requirements. Um, parents can come in and e-sign the documents that they need to sign. Um, and the funding team who I work closely with, they can also see the report and make any suggestions like, you know, hey, I think you ac accidentally recommended two different access methods. We're going to need you to clarify that because insurance will only fund one access method, for example. So the e-funding portal allows for you to have a lot of eyes on the report. Um, for support throughout that process. And there's also templates and examples, um, not just of a whole report, but of each section. So if you do decide to write a report, let's use Rosie and eye tracking as example as our example, um, you could use the example template for cerebral palsy as the diagnosis. And there's a whole paragraph that you can, um, use as your kind of template, and then of course customize it with Rosie's specific needs and um, information from the trial. There's also templates specific to each device. So you don't need to know and memorize all of the specs of the TD pilot. There's a whole paragraph that you can use as a template that talks about it's got iOS, the eye tracker is, you know, this new model of eye tracker and all of that. And you can just plop that into your report and it saves you a lot of time. And it's also um, written to the insurance uh, specifications. I wanted to point out also that um, I've talked a little bit about the Learning Hub resources, the courses that you can take about funding, but we also have this program called the Funding Coach. Um, that is great if you are an SLP who has not yet written an AAC recommendation report. If it's your first time or first time in a while <laughs> writing a report, um, you can be paired for some one-on-one -on -one support with someone that works for the funding team. Um, and they will meet with you over Zoom for about 30 minutes, walk you through that e-funding portal, show you how to use those templates. And then they will be your first eyes on the report once you're finished um, to make sure that it is in line with those insurance um, standards and requirements. 
they'll give you specific edit highlights if you need to change some things. Um, and they're they're experts in that and they work with insurance closely. So that's a really nice mentorship tool. And then after you've gone through that program once, you've got a perfect report to refer back to in the future for your next one, which makes it easier down the road. So I wanted to show some of these courses on the Learning Hub. Um, so let's say, you know, again, we're working with Rosie. We want to know what is the process for funding. So this takes me into the Learning Hub. This is a course called Device Funding for the SLP Resources to Get Started. Again, it's ASHA CEUs, so that's pretty nice. These are free CEUs. I can start this course, and um, I've already taken it, but it will give you a tour of the funding website, show you how to navigate the funding resources, um, and there are um, videos throughout here. So a really nice tool to help you get started with that process. Another one, um, this tools and templates for the SLP. This is another course um, that is specific to writing and evaluation. So I would maybe take them in that order. So first exploring the process and then writing the evaluation. If I start this course, it actually has examples um, within the course, one for writing an evaluation within the e-funding portal for someone with autism. So that may be a very common one in your setting. And then there's also um, an example for writing one for someone with ALS, if you happen to um, have any curiosity about working with adults as well. And then there are also links to the funding resources. So at the end of every course, um, there will be this page that um, gives you links to different state forms, Medicare, um, information on the ASHA website, and general templates under this SLP resources tab. And you get CEUs for that whole process. Any questions there? Okay, I will keep going, holler if there are questions. Um, so now talking about a little bit down the line, let's say some time has passed, Rosie has had her device approved by insurance. Um, there are also supports on the Toby Dynavox Learning Hub for um, the initial setup process, setting it up and customizing it for Rosie um, and ongoing support. So if I, wanted to learn about how to set up that device. Um, I can go into the, the course here. I would get here from that course catalog and go to devices and then choose her device. Um, but there's a video on unboxing, opening the box and what's in there <laughs> um, <laughs> and how to set up the eye tracking with Apple's assistive touch. So that's something that they walk you through step by step. Um, how to calibrate and mount and how to check positioning, which is really important for eye tracking. Then there's mounting and positioning guides. So that might be something for OTs um, to save and refer back to um, for future students that you're working with, like troubleshooting and refining eye gaze as well. That's one that I would recommend having on hand for future. Um, choosing the best apps, lots of different, lots of different tools available in here. And then if we wanted to review her communication software, say it's been a little bit since we took that course and we want to learn how to set it up with her specific access method. So eye tracking, but also what is her dwell time or activation time going to be? Um, how are we going to set up the visual feedback, the auditory feedback, all of those things? I could come into this course and learn how to set up her page set. Um, and there's a video in here as well. Oops. Okay. So now, uh, and of course, there's also my support and, and tech supports help along the way. Um, so I hope that that kind of case study showed um, that you have support at every step of the process from when you first think, hey, I think this student could benefit from AAC, 
through the assessment and funding documentation processes, um, as well as finding ongoing support and implementation supports. Um, shifting gears a little bit from talking about the Learning Hub, um, another great resource is mytobydynavox.com. If you're not familiar with this, you can make a free account. Um, it's the same login across all of our websites. So if you have a um, an account with the Learning Hub for CEUs, that will get you logged into My Toby Dynavox, and it will also um, log you into the funding portal as well. And with your free account, you as SLPs, OTs, um, anyone working with AAC users, you can set up your account to be a professional account. Um, and I, I will, I shared a PDF of how to do that, um, which I think will be available to you all after this meeting. Um, if not, I can send it directly, but that will allow you to get free access to TD Snap for the purpose of trials and modeling. Um, and within TD Snap, one thing that a lot of folks don't know about, but is one of my favorite tools, you can do remote sharing and editing of page sets. So by making this account, you get the free software um, and you can then share it and customize it for various students. There's a link here in the slides, which I believe you have access to, um, to create your account. Blair, yes. um, just a quick question. What about parents? What What is their accessibility here as far as that particular resource? Yeah, Creating so parents, an account and what? Yeah, great question. Parents can also make a My Toby Dynavox account. Um, in fact, if they have a child using um, TD Snap or any of our programs, I would suggest that they make a My Toby Dynavox account because then they will have um, the ability to send the, the students' page sets, um, their vocabulary layout to the SLP or to the teacher. Um, for And if any changes are made at school, um, those changes can be shared back at home so that they're working on the same system for modeling purposes. Um, and then of course, they can also access the Learning Hub and all of the, the training resources about modeling and all of that as well. There's also within my Toby Dynavox, um, they can access a free trial of TD Snap on any iPad or Windows tablet. Um, so I can send you separately if you're curious um, the steps to doing that. They can get a 60 day free trial of TD Snap. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. and Blair, um, Thank you. our friend Kelly Fauner has joined us today. She is an advisor to this Echo Voices uh, network. And she says creating an account is very easy process and the information there is well organized. Um, I think we can we can see how well organized it is from what you've shown us today. Kelly, do you have anything else you wanna say? No, I just wanted to add that, that it's, uh, it's well worth the time for people to do it. And for people, I know that that Blair's mostly talking about people who are SLPs, but for those of us that are also on, that are other roles that are also on AAC assessment teams, you can work with your Dynavox person to maybe get access to some of the other tools that are available once you've logged in and created your MyToby account. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. It is um, it is really quick and easy to create an account, um, just takes an email and a password. And I think they send you a confirmation email, just like signing up for most things. Um, I also wanted to back up a little bit um, and share that TD Snap Lite um, is a free version of TD Snap. So if you do have any um, families that you work with that are curious about it as a platform, they can download the free version anytime directly from the App Store, um, TD Snap Lite, L-I-T-E. Um, it's free. It does not have the voice output. 
Um, so that's where if they want the voice output to really explore the full functionality, um, families can get the free 60 day option, but SLPs, any professional um, can get that free speaking output um, through just setting up that professional account, which I have shared the steps to doing so. We've kind of been asking questions throughout, so unless there's um, other questions or anything that folks want to share, I can keep cruising here. Okay, and then just to summarize um, the, the supports that you all have access to um, throughout the whole process, as well as ongoing support, um, once your student has a device, I wanted to just share um, we've already talked about funding here, um, but these are, a, this is a quick glimpse at some of our devices. Um, you might recognize the i13 here. Someone said they were working with someone with an i13. Um, the SC tablet is an iPad-based touch tablet. Um, the TD Pilot here is that iPad Pro. Um, sorry, I wasn't sure if you could see my screen actually. This is the i13. <laughs> this is the um, the SC tablet iPad option, and this is that TD Pilot um, with iPad iPad Pro with eye tracking. Um, so those would get my support as well as tech support throughout the life of the device. I'm just kind of summarizing here. We are nearing the end, and I've talked about these resources a lot. Um, but I wanted to pause, and if there's any topic that you would like to learn more about, um, feel free to put that in the chat or shout it out, and I'm happy to pull up the Learning Hub and dive into one of those categories to show you what's available there, if that would be helpful. There's resources on mounting, devices, funding. If not, and if we feel okay, that's all right too. Well, I, uh, I'll i just say mine because I figure typing will be too long. I've mostly been working with kiddos who are uh, direct selection, who are independent ambulation. Um, and I expect I'm going to be getting some kiddos who have those more complex bodies and I don't even know where I would start as somebody who's not an OT specialist, who's just an SLP. Um, so where would I start for a kiddo like that where I, I just, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that um, some of those access method trainings um, could be a great place to start. So I'm happy to pull those up again here. Um, so if I go to the Learning Hub and I'm first logged in, are you still seeing the learning hub here? Okay. Yep. I've got course catalog and I would say um, checking out anything here under access methods. Um, maybe also, maybe also oops, got a little feedback there. Um, maybe also if you're not sure where to start, um, depending on your familiarity with and experience with AAC, you know, in general, some of these, what is AAC, get started with AAC. Those are good ones. Um, but I would say access methods. Um, and then once you are starting to consider a specific software, there's different um, courses here under, like if you want to learn about scanning page sets within TV Snap, that's a good one. Um, so that just pulled up all the ones that I checked, but let's say you wanna search for scanning. Let's see. Scanning 101, this could be a good course. Um, so that walks you through the different um, types of switch scanning, the different scan patterns. Um, it's also for ASHA CEUs. So, identify two characteristics of someone who may be appropriate for scanning, um, different scan types and behaviors, um, options for visual impairments. That could be a good course. Um, if we go back, 
there's different, there's a course on different types of switches. So if you're working with um, some switch scanners, that could be a really good one. And then and this. Are there courses also that would talk about like, if I've got one of these kiddos who's using switches or eye gaze or whatever, um, how I then model with them? Because direct select, I know how to model. I do that all day. But you know, does it say, okay, now here's how you model to support this person? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that's under basics, but let me search for model. Um, hmm. That magic of modeling course um, is a great one. And I think they do talk about modeling with different access methods. Okay. So let's see, I'm just gonna pop into this course resources for modeling um so here's a 20 minute video about modeling i can't recall if they do talk about modeling for scanning specifically i know they talk about it with touch and eye tracking but i would bet that they go into it for scanning um so this could be a really good one as well great thank you very much yeah, of course. Oh, Blair, I, I find myself curious. I'm wondering if you could use this course or um, some other one of your choice to um, to show us a little bit more about what a course looks like. So, uh, do they all start with a video? Um, like, could we walk through one a little bit? Yeah, or yeah, certainly. Let's do this one. Um, and I know we didn't prep to share sound, Gail. So if it doesn't share sound, um, we can troubleshoot that. But okay. let's say I'm going to start this course from the beginning. So first it would have me confirm my registration information, choose if you want you know, ASHA to track that for you. Um, there's a course summary. So course summaries are typically PDFs that you can save. Um, that's really nice. They kind of summarize the core concepts, um, and they typically give some suggestions of, of things that you can start implementing right away. So, um, this one talks about folks who can model. Um, there's also links in these oftentimes, um, like this, these are all links to available resources. So it links you back to the learning hub. Um, resources to use core words at home as low tech options for the purpose of modeling. Um, it links you into some free resources, the core first learning books and lessons. If you haven't explored those, I can also share that as a follow up um, after this meeting. The core first lessons are there's hundreds of pages of free things that you all can download and implement with AAC users and non AAC users. Um, there are core word reading activities, core word bingo activities, um, core word resources, or sorry, um, word searches. So there's nice um, games and activities that you can bring into any uh, classroom, AAC users or, or not um, to support literacy. Um, so this one links to a lot of nice resources here at the end. And if I go back to my course, I can say, okay, great, I've completed this step. It talks about disclosures, so we can skip that. Um, but I can play a little bit of this video, Gail, and we can see. Yeah, let's if see if it works. It usually often does. Okay, let me know. Welcome to the magic of modeling. Yeah. Great. As an SOP, educator, parent, or communication partner, you may be wondering how you can support your AAC communicator. During this training, we'll learn all about the magic of modeling, a very specific research-based strategy you can use to increase your communicator's use of their device and improve their language and literacy skills. During this training, we're going to cover the biggest, best thing you can do to support your AAC communicators. We're gonna talk all about modeling and why we want to use it as a strategy, as well as how to effectively model for your communicator. You'll then learn how to access some resources and supports we have for you here at Toby Nine Box. Would you like me to keep it going, Gail? Or is that? 
Uh, it's your call. I don't know what else is in the in the course, but that's you an know, awful cute kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I did want to scan forward a bit and just see if they do talk about alternate access methods. It looks like a lot of touch access. Let's see. It talks about different folks who can model. Yeah, so I don't know, Julie, I think it was you who asked, I don't know that this course actually does talk about modeling for switch access, but that's also something I can request that the Learning Hub um, update. Um, anytime, if there are specific things that you all want to see trainings on, um, feel free to let me know. I can pass that on to the learning team who makes these things. And often they will add trainings to the live calendar, which you can join in real time, um, that, that Zoom format where you have the ability to ask questions and things. That is um, kind of a living list that anytime there's requests, they can put together a training and, and offer CEUs for that. And I see Chandra says modeling for IGAs too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I will follow up on that. Let me make a little note. Um, while I'm here in the Learning Hub, I wanted to show you the, let's see, I'm going to go back to the course, go back to the Learning Hub here. Um, I'm actually going to log out of the Learning Hub just so that it brings me to this landing page. Are you all seeing that now? Yeah. Okay. So this live learning events at the top, um, is where you can access the live learning calendar. There are a lot of great uh, trainings. There's almost one every single day, as you'll see. Um, and there's one specifically in May coming up that fulfills the ASHA ethics requirement, and it's all about AAC. So if you need your ethics credit, um, that could be a good one to take. But um, you'll see there's ones on editing in TD Snap. Um, specific device trainings, but also these general, like creating a positive communication environment. I believe the ethics course is on May 17th, this one, why AAC matters. That one is um, in line with the ethics requirement for our ASHA Cs. Okay, I'm gonna pop back in here. Oh. Sorry, I lost my place. Um, we're nearly at the end here. Um, this is a link to sign up for the, the Learning Hub. So you all will have um, my slides in a PDF, um, but it's learn.tobydynavox.com if you'd rather do it sooner. Um, but this is the link to sign up. Again, there's self-paced and live um, learning resources as well as ASHA CEUs. I'm going to take that ethics course. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I know a lot of folks, um, a lot of SLPs have been eager to sign up for it um, because it fulfills that ethics requirement. So if you want to sign up for that, I would say do it sooner rather than later because it may fill up, but they'll offer it again if it does fill up. There's a link to that live calendar. Um, and then ongoing supports for folks with devices. Of course, there's customer, um, customer service, customer support, as well as tech support. Um, so these are kind of beyond my scope. I help when a family calls and says, hey, we want to learn how to create a button in the software. You know, we want to learn how to link a page. We want to build a page all about our upcoming vacation for our AAC user. I can help with that sort of support um, and training. I do Zoom calls like this, share my screen, walk folks through the editing process. Um, technical support is a little bit more for like my device's charger stopped working or you know, the screen seems frozen, I'm touching it and it's not working. Those sort of hardware things is when I would say call tech support. Um, but they're wonderful. They can remote into a, a user's device. Um, and if, if anything needs to be sent in to be repaired, they will send out a loaner device so that the user's not without their voice in the meantime while things are being repaired. 
so they can help with how-to calls, you know, similar to what I do with trainings, um, troubleshooting issues, setting up the initial setup. Um, if a family wants to just call tech support and they don't necessarily need me to come to their home, they can call tech support and get it set up um, as well as repairs. Okay, so um, I wanted to just leave you with this question, um, thinking about what are your next steps? I hope you've learned that there are lots of resources out there for you all. Um, and I hope you have maybe some user in mind, some student in mind who you're thinking, gosh, some of these supports could be helpful for. Um, and maybe you have a next step in mind after today. If you wanna share any of those, I'm, I'm happy to, to hear about those next steps as well. And again, here's my contact info. That's it for me, Gail. Well, I want to thank you for for jumping in at the last minute with us. We really um, appreciate your, your willingness to do that. And it was great to get to meet you. Um, I, I know a lot of our um, folks who were on this call are from the Portland area. So if you don't know them already, you may meet them soon. Um, but I, I do want to reiterate that question of what are your next steps in terms of maybe looking at the learning hub or or uh, or some things. I want to say personally, I'm really interested in looking at those training courses about access methods, not so much for myself. I think I have a, a fairly good knowledge of, of access methods in general, but as a way to share them with, um, with teachers and parents and, and other people who might be thinking about how their kid could, could uh, use an augmentative communication device. Yeah, that's great. You had homework in mind. What what kind of homework do you have in mind? Well, um, I'm moving into the assistive tech and learning specialist position with OTAP and RSOI. And so I, this summer, while it's slow, I plan to do a lot of research because I don't work with children or anything like that, but I get a lot of questions from parents and SLPs, like, what's the best thing to use? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not an SLP. I can't tell you that, but I can send you to this website. I can recommend this video. Um, and the fact that you guys uh, have a lot of general training is fantastic. I taken a lot of um, courses on access methods and things like that, but um, there, there always are new techniques and tips. And so I'm always looking for more information and, and it looks like this is fantastic. Um, and for parents in particular, I ask because I am a parent of an autistic child. Well, she's an adult child now. But I, I do get those questions from parents and even adults. I had a couple come to me recently and he was, he's a stroke victim dealing with aphasia. And they had so many questions about AAC for me. And so um, I will be sending them the Learning Hub as a resource for her to do some research research so i'm excited about that yeah that's great yeah there are learning hub and live events about um supporting folks with aphasia and they will um show how to get the access to the software and how how to do all of that so that's great anybody else want to Bring up a an idea that you had when you got learned about the learning hub today. Well, for me, I am interested in getting my ABAC certification 
And so having this resource to be able to get more on my curriculum vitae to be able to say, yes, I, I really am ready to do this. Sounds fantastic. It is pretty impressive that those extra CEUs are at no cost. That's, a, that's an unusual situation. So thank you for that gift. Yeah, of course. Oh, I know that uh, we have had some students, some uh, SLPA students and SLP students come in recently through the ESD. And they all said the same thing that you said, that they only had one course, one semester on AAC and next to no exposure. And so um, this is fantastic, something that I can say to them, hey, go, go on this site and, and you can get some more information. Like I can show you some things in my library, but <laughs> um, it's a fantastic resource. So I want to say that um, we are planning, uh, beginning to plan Echo Voices for next year. And um, we'd be really interested to hear from any of you about the kinds of topics that, um, that you'll be interested to hear next year in our Echo Voices Network. Um, we are, we have, um, over time we've, looked carefully at things like communication partners, how to do an AAC assessment, uh, AAC implementation. Those have been our topics um, in past years, um, but we're kind of looking for a theme for next year. So I wanna invite all of you, if you um, have ideas about what that theme might, might look like, or if there are things that you want us to to learn, uh, to arrange so that you can learn about them during next year's Echo Voices sessions. We would love to hear from you either today on the live chat or um, any other time. Um, I know it's hard to think about next year, but that is what we're thinking about soon here. Well, I don't know about a theme, but I, I mentioned earlier the ABAC certification, but there isn't a lot of information about that. I would love a training about what goes into that and what they're looking for and, and how to get certified and all that. That would be wonderful. Okay. I'd love to know about that too. I don't think I know much. Anybody else before we before we end today? I just okay, want to well, say I think thank you for touching on that part about funding, because um, I'm over in northeastern Oregon in the uh, Intermountain ESD, and so we have devices with communication. You know, we have the TD Snap Light on some devices, and then some other communication methods as well. And we just give iPads out to students who are trialing all these different ones and with the, what the SLP feels fits. And so then we're like, okay, well, we need that back for another student. And so this rush at the end of the year to find funding for the school districts and find, finding funding through the insurance for the families has been kind of a, um, a new, new area for me. So I was excited to learn about the whole rundown on how to get the funding done for um, a device. So thank you for touching on that. I'm gonna go back into my um, little courses then make sure I go back through everything and find it again. So thank you. Yeah, of course. I know that's one of the most common questions I get and something I love sharing resources about because um, you know every school district or ESD functions differently in terms of funding, um, whether you supply iPads or um, can go through families um, medical insurance benefits. Um, but I think it's a lot easier. The funding process is easier than folks think. And in Oregon, we're lucky to have a lot of great um, funding resources. Um, Medicare typically covers 80%. Medicaid in Oregon fully covers 100% of devices and mounts um, and switches, whatever the user needs. Um, 
and then there are state programs and grants and things like that. If funding is a benefit, we're lucky to have a lot of resources. So I'm glad that that feels a little bit more accessible. Okay, well, Chandra, why don't we end the recording now and um, we can have any kind of a conversation that that we want to have. We uh, 